television at the time. Uh, and Will we see a build-up of the romance between me and Melora? 
Um, I'd be nice, you know. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't know. Um, I, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I've got everything I need. <laughs> There's some rumors flying around, there always are, so it's a possibility that she'll come back. I hope so. I hope they've just got to get her whole anti-gravity thing together. Uh, that'd be great if they did. Um, I saw a hand here somewhere a minute ago. It was you. Hello again. I'm you. Um, what are you doing during the hiatus? I know last week was actually like, the whole hiatus and you were regularly working during hiatus. This hiatus? Um, this hiatus, which starts basically next month, or the end of next month, um, is I, I'm, I think I might go back to England again, because this hiatus is shorter. Our first hiatus was great. It was three months long, and we all took time off, and everything was wonderful. But this one's sort of eight weeks long, and um, some of the family who I haven't seen since the last time I went home, I'm going to go back and see them again, like my mother, <coughs> whoever she is. <laughs> uh, those people, those, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say hello to them. So I'll probably spend some time back in England again and do something in England, some small, kind of very arty, slightly boring show or something. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the sort of thing we seem to do in England. I don't know if you. Um, uh, you know all know about Louis Farrakhan here yet? Do you? I'm sure you yes. do. Right? It's huge in LA. I imagine it's huge all over America. The Wrath of Farrakhan. Um, the Wrath of Farrakhan. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, I, I just mentioned that only only because he was at the studio the other day. It was kind of amusing. It was an amusing sort of thing that happened. Um, our um, security guard called Miles, who I hope becomes famous in his own right because he's terrific. Guy looks like a Klingon. He's a massive guy. Wonderful fella. Um, Farrakhan was due to come to the set that day uh, to go to appear on our senior hall, um, and he had about 200 people with him, I'd say, um, all in bow ties and, and suits, and they were a kind of entourage. Uh, they were very intimidating, um, and they were all lined up along the streets. Um, and I'm, I'm saying this because one of them was really rude to me, so I'm going to just say this. Um, uh, and uh, they were all out along the streets, like standing there, looking very, very dominating. And um, Farah Khan's entourage came through, about six cars, all bulletproof, um, with forests of automatic weaponry inside. It was quite extraordinary. The president came, four people came with him. <laughs> um, and then two police helicopters flying around over the top. Um, and uh, Miles, as soon as this entourage came whizzing through, with people hanging out the doors, just got in front and went, Stop! <laughs> They're filming Deep Space Nine right now, you're going to have to wait. <laughs>
seen many of them since I've been doing Star Trek, because I've been sort of banished to LA. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm doing my time there. So uh, I, I suppose that when I do go back to see them, I'll find, I'll find out exactly what they do think. Uh, at the moment, it's just kind of a novelty, you know. Um, we go out for dinner, then they'll all just look at me at the end with the check gun. <laughs> It's just not shown enough, and if it is shown, it's shown at some bizarre time on some odd, on one of our four channels, but the oddest one. Yeah, we've got 500 channels here at PBS, which no one's watching. We've got four channels there at BBC Two, which no one's watching. And uh, so it's on that channel uh, most of the time when it's on. Uh, so it's, it's only just catching on. I think it is. I just you just need some publicity, a good kick up the. the, the <laughs> I don't know if you remember. Anyone here went to a convention with Terry Farrell? Probably not. She's never done one. She's doing some more. You did. Apparently, I uh, heard a lot about the fact that she couldn't get many words out without an expletive coming out. <laughs> I'm a bit like that myself. I just have to watch myself. Primarily because of people like you, sir. What have you got to ask? Am I married yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not married yet. Yet. No, I'm not. I'm not even engaged to be married yet. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. How do I like the role of Bashir? Um, I, I, I really like him. I mean, I think he's a terrific guy. Um, <laughs> I'm playing him. But, uh, I suppose I ought to find him quite amusing, you know. I, I, you know, you don't want to take him too seriously. Uh, and, and also, I suppose he doesn't take the whole Star Trek thing too seriously, uh, at least the, the, the idea of being out in space and stuff. And I quite like the fact he isn't perfection on legs, you know, um, because uh, it's needed <laughs> in the whole world of television and probably not in the world of Star Trek, because Star Trek is perfect anyway, right? But uh, it's, it's quite nice to have a look and see some of the chinks in the wall uh, and see what they're doing. And Bashir represents one of those for me. Um, and if he ever just starts lying to everybody, you know, if he ever does something that is absolutely unrealistic, then I'll worry about it. But at the moment, he's doing stuff that I can be kind of proud of, I hope. In a funny old way. Right over there, Matt. Um, I think everybody does that to some extent. Um, at the end of a long night, is anybody the practical joker on the set? I think Armin is a great joker. Uh, I don't know why, but as soon as he gets that head on, he stops. I mean, he starts telling jokes. And he's like, it's hard to shut up even without the head on. He's <laughs> <laughs> a tricky guy. Uh, but um, everybody has to go. I mean, I, I suppose the, the latest fad is to stick. If you can't remember your lines, it's two o'clock in the morning to stick your lines on the back of someone else who <laughs> happens to be in front of you. We're shooting a show right now where you'll never know it, but uh, Kira Nerys is speaking to the commander like this, and I'm behind her, and I'm reading her back. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know which show it is, but it's one of the, one of the ones we're doing right now. I can't remember what I'll, I'll tell you if I, if I find out. I'll write to the fan club or something and say, that was the show for anybody who's interested. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. How do you like working with Terry Farrell? Will we be seeing more scenes with Bashir and Dax? I hope so. I hope so. Um, uh, Terry Farrell is tremendous to work with. She's great fun. I, I haven't worked with her very much in the last six or seven shows. Uh, um, and would like to. Would like to. I don't really know, because at the moment we're in a situation where if we do work together, then the romance comes up. And uh, I don't know whether they want that to come up every time we're with each other. So they might want... <laughs> Is that uh, love? <laughs> um, so uh, and until until they work out what they want to do with those two characters, then I, I'm not sure when we'll work together. But uh, they obviously haven't got a clue right now. Yeah, I will get to you next. I'd like to know what your cat's name is. Smitty. 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 She's um she's a very adorable cat. I told everybody yesterday she looks like Yoda from Star Wars. <laughs> She can't, she, she, because she uh, was in a fire a long time ago, she lost all her teeth, which is a very unfortunate thing to happen for a cat, or at least most of her teeth, except for one. But she's 20, she's sort of getting on a bit. 
And she doesn't meow, she goes, Um, being from England, was I aware of Star Trek? Um, and what other theatre have I done in America? Oh, in England. Um, I've done a fair amount of theatre in England, uh, none in America. Um, LA isn't a place where you can really get away with doing theatre. They're not very excited about theatre there. Um, come to DC and do it. Come to DC, I'd love to. That'd be great. Have a few weeks off and come to DC and do some theatre. Uh, we, we as a cast, like TNG did, we might get together and do a big play together and take it all along. Maybe that's a great idea. Maybe, everyone, maybe we should get everybody in the cast to get everybody in the country to suggest what play we do, and then we'll do it. Measure for measure. Measure for measure. You like that one? That's low warehouse in Texas. I'm the bodyguard. I remember you. Um, otherwise, I, in England, I've just done sort of all the little plays that, that one does. You know, as, as um, being my age, you end up doing kind of the Benedicts and the Hamlets and things if you're in Shakespeare, or if you if you you do the Shaw or Oscar Wilde shows, you know those sort of things. And it's it's great fun. It's it's harder to do theatre than it is to do TV, as far as I'm concerned. Is so, there someone in hand? Yes, I'll get to you next, man. I'll just go to this lady. Um, Dr. Bashir, I'll just repeat your question. Dr. Bashir is um, one of the few positive roles to come out for an Arab character in LA. Definitely. <laughs> I, I can't think of another one. I mean, it's Thief of Baghdad. Um, the Jungle Book. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely aware of it. Uh, but then I'm, I don't really want to make it into a political thing. You know, um, I've, cause I've been, it's been a temptation with the press and people to, to actually turn it into something political, because that's the first thing they do. How do you feel about that? Palestine. Israel. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, and I, I'd rather not get into that, because he's not, I don't want him to become a tool like that. Um, I quite like the fact that Bashir, who is definitely not Arab as such on the show, I'm the one who's Arab, um, is uh, fairly difficult to understand where he's from. Because uh, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't matter by that time where you're from. The first couple of questions, you know, and where are you from? Oh, you're like me. Let's go to drink soon. <laughs> um, so I, hopefully, the, I think the writers came up to me the other day and asked me what, what middle name I'd like, because they were trying to work out a middle name for the, for the, for the doctor, uh, for the show we're doing right now. And I said, I don't mind anything, as long as it's impossible to work out where it comes from. And it's weird. So they came up with a weird name that they got. Huh? And it's not Tiberian. And it's not Tiberian. <laughs> are you really up putting your hand up now, aren't you? Or you? Yeah, you are. Great. Give me a question. Shout it out. Who's my favorite singer? Yeah. Oh, what a good question. Um, my favorite singer. Let me think now. Um, I'm not very good on up-to-date music. Country. I'm one of those squares who likes a lot of classical stuff. So, um, my favorite singers would really be people who you're probably not really interested in at your age of 11 or whatever it is, um, like Jesse Norman. Or like that. But um, I, the kind of singer you meet, maybe, I, I, I quite like Prince. Is he still around? He's <laughs> <laughs> my favorite singer. All right. Yes, ma'am. What's my favorite episode that I've made so far? Um, out of the ones I've been in, uh, Melora for one reason, <laughs> and uh, Armageddon Gang, probably my favorite episode. Uh, it's been a gentle episode, which I thought. Yeah. Um, I'd like to give you something. Oh, okay. I'm here for you. Thanks, man. Just wait for the wink. This is safe. <laughs> Masha Gay Todd would like you to remember our shift. So here's our shift caption. Well, thank you very much. USS Edith, and some of us are here. Oh, welcome to the USS Edicts.
told we don't have time. Um, it's very sweet of you to offer. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to get a plane about 6 o'clock and I'm back to LA. But thanks anyway. Yeah.
Mr. O'Brien is a nasty piece of work. Uh, we, we, we like to not like each other. Let's put it that way. We get on. We get on. In a sort of bizarre way, but we get on. I talk to him more than I probably talk to anyone else in the class. You know? So we kind of get on. Yes, ma'am. Are there any television shows, British or American, I'd like to do a guest appearance show? Uh, on, on show, I think. Um, I think so, yeah. I, I, I really enjoy um, a couple of, I mean, certainly in the sci-fi area. Um, I like uh, The X-Files. I think that's a tremendous show. That's a really good show. Um, and, uh, oh, I'd like to talk about that in a second. I think it's quite interesting a subject. Um, and then, uh, probably... I, I really like Northern Exposure. What is it about? What is it about that show? It's such a bizarre show, you know. It's not again. But a week. But it's great. And uh, I love that. And it's, you know, it's totally great. So I like that show. I wouldn't mind doing some guests. I would also like to, there's going to be a, I think the latest show that's on the, on the, uh, the books at the moment, which I'd like to do a guest appearance on, but it hasn't actually come out, is, is the new uh, sitcom. Um, a sci-fi sitcom, and it's uh, it sounds bizarre, but what it is is a spoof like airplane of sci-fi, but on every week. And it, I've read the first script, and it's very funny. I mean, you know, lots of stop signs in space and cabs, <laughs> and uh, all sorts of bizarre stuff. It's going to be a good show, I think. Uh, it in, like yes. Well, the first time I was recognized um, was um, whew, uh, from Star Trek. Uh, probably, I mean, it still goes on in a way. <laughs> I don't really get recognized, you know. Some people obviously recognize me and go, hey, doc, oh, you know, they do that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, but uh, most people sort of do a sort of, it's a sort of bizarre situation where you're walking on the street and they're walking on the street and we're about the same distance we are away from each other now. And <coughs> spot me and we're eyes locked. You know, there's nothing you can do about it, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> they come right up to you, and they go, Oh, where was it, man? Where was it? Where did I be? <laughs> I'm sure we met, you know. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where was it? Uh, uh, I've said that before and actually said, no, I'm a guy on Star Trek. <laughs> I don't watch that. <laughs> That was a bizarre thing when I first came to LA. It was um, because I, I, I hadn't quite got it together. All I'd realized, I'd just got to LA, and because I was so surreal arriving in LA, I immediately thought I was a star. <laughs> I hadn't even been in the show yet, but I was a star. So everyone who looked at me, I was going, <laughs> And I learned the hard way by going to my first uh, um, preview uh, or uh, feature film preview. It was Columbus, the movie. And they send all the people at the studio on to go on to sort of put bums on seats, you know. Uh, and to make, give the press something to take a photograph of on the way in. So we're all sent along and we go on this big corridor with red carpet and golden rails beside. And hundreds of press get click, 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 waiting for a star, like Gerard Depardieu or something, to come on. And I was going along the thing, sauntering along the line, and they've been, they've been chink, 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 chink. I was just sort of, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> The show hasn't even come out yet. Who has been telling them? I must get a publicist. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I stopped at uh, long last to stop to be hit in the back, turn around to find it's George Takei. <laughs> it was very polite. It was very polite. I, mean, I think he could have gave me his car keys and said, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> In the beginning, I got a lot of bad reaction for the character, um, Bashir, um, and did, did I get any of that personally? Um, I mean, uh, yes, I suppose I did. I mean, from, from conventions, um, and certain, certainly the early ones I might have gone to, um, somebody might have asked, or somebody might have stated that they weren't very keen on my character, and thought that I was my character, and they had a good time to look enjoying that moment. Uh, but um, I, 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 I expected a lot of bad stuff at the beginning. I didn't even think it was bad, actually, 
I didn't think what, what was happening was particularly bad. It was just not great. <laughs> and um, it, was, it, pro it probably started at what was really important, I think is really important for the show, and that is just debate, discussion. And if anything, Bashir has sparked a huge amount of discussion, um, just dividing people, but for a kind of, in a good way, you know, uh, about an issue which is kind of very human. So I think that uh, if people are getting back together again over that subject, it's because they're seeing that he's sort of okay. He's not actually a jerk all the time. He has a bit of roundness to his character. Uh, and he will grow more and more, more and more. Yeah. How do you like being an actor? How do I like being an actor? <laughs> yesterday about the action figure thing. It's very, very weird uh, to have an action figure, but you just got to block it out. Like, just, just when you have one, just as I'm just giving you the advice now, <laughs> what to do about it. Um, uh, just, just forget about it, because it is too weird. Uh, I mean, the most, I mean, I can think of any one positive thing to do, and that's send the things along to the set and do my job for me every now and then. And I can't be bothered to get out of bed. Yeah. Oh, the symbiote. <laughs> Anyone know? That wasn't real. <laughs> Darn. It was, the symbiote was like, um, was uh, just a bit of rubber. And uh, I had to take it out of the thing. I gotta get my microphone. But because it was, it was rubber, it originally had a wire in it that made it move to make it like realistic. But because they couldn't do that, they just covered it in slime and said, said we can't put the rubber thing, the, the wire in here to make it move, so you're just going to have to wheel it around. <laughs> you okay, Jed? Good. Um, it was a, the, the, most of the props, apart from that one, which is one of the particular ones that I find very funny, and, that, and another one when Odo comes in and there's a tentacle, you know, the famous tentacle. Where did that come from? And the tentacle comes around, and uh, that was another piece of rubber with a man above with a ladder just going <laughs> like that. Uh, I shouldn't give these things away, but they're so funny. <laughs> and I had to grab it and just. <laughs> to notice that. <laughs> so it was a weird thing to do. But apart from that, all the other props work very well. The tricorders and stuff, you know, they all have lights and buttons that work and everything's got, got batteries in it and they, they all, they spend a lot of time making sure those things are practical. Um, certainly the lasers and hypersprays and stuff, they're, they're all practical. They just, I mean, they don't actually spray anything and stuff, but um, they, they, they beep. <laughs> yeah. How technically literate am I? Computer literate. I'm becoming computer literate in a sort of sad, sort of <laughs> first rate kind of way. Um, but uh, I'm not technically literate at all, forget that. But I've got a computer now and I know the difference in ROM and RAM, uh, or RAM and RIM. Those guys, those brothers, those two grainy kids who are in the computer. I'm learning that stuff, but I've got, I'm into, I'm into all that Photoshop and uh, Adobe Illustrator and scanning and all that stuff. I love all that, so I'm continually getting people's photographs and putting their head upside down. <laughs> <laughs> people are getting a bit bored of that now. Uh, but that's, that's the sort of stuff I like doing. And I, I've, I've got this sort of Mac thing and I, I love playing with it. So that's basically the, the extent of my literacy on the computer program. Have I been on the internet? You know, I went on, I did Prodigy for a day. And so I'm sure it's a great, great network, but they, they I think for, for some reason or other, my letter was taken out. Because um, I, I signed a letter and I, it was basically, there was a whole set of, I'm sure it's kind of, it was a minor controversy on Prodigy at the time. Yeah. Um, there was a thing, there's a lot of Bashir basher clubs, you know, I love to hate Bashir, or I hate Bashir, or who hates Bashir, or let's hate Bashir more. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other ways of killing Bashir? There were a lot of those, and they were brought to my attention by someone. Uh, and uh, so I thought, wow, that's incredible. There's all these people, and two, two people going, no, he's great, he's great. And uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so I thought I'd write an open letter saying, OK, if you've got any problems, write to me. And uh, let's see if you can sort of dis discuss it, you know, whatever your problem is. I might have a reason which would convince you anyway. That was a serious letter. So I wrote the letter in, 
And Prodigy, I think, although I'm not really sure because you never can tell, just said, oh, this is a guy who's going the wrong way around because if he's a celebrity, we'd like him to go through the celebrity channel where we get paid for it or we get some money out of it. Um, I don't like him to do it uh, this way, straight over the air, um, so we'll take his letter away. And I wrote a very rude letter to Prodigy. Um, <laughs> saying, saying, you can't do this. You know, this is, you gave me the account and I'm going to use it. Um, we're, we're like, uh, they didn't reply. Um, except the next letter I wrote, which was a complete non sequitur, they put, they published. You know, it's like the second, halfway through the second sentence of the third letter, they just like publish that and mean anything to anybody. So the only event of the outcome of that was everybody was going, was that Bashir? Was that an imposter pretending to be Bashir? And I didn't think to say, who would want to be Bashir? Who would pretend to be Bashir? What credibility is, is there in that anyway? So uh, that was a big long story on that one. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's time the truth was out. 
Has anyone else got a question at all? Yeah. I haven't had it 20 years. It's 20 years old, yeah. Publicity shots or uh, your character in a store? Ah, weird. I'm weird. I was saying yesterday to the people who were here yesterday how strange it is to go past the shop window and see your face in the window. It's one of the oddest experiences. I, I, I really don't know if I'd recommend it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weird. What are they doing? What, what is my face doing? First of all, it doesn't look like you, um, as you know you. You know, it's kind of. Since you know, my photos look like that, so uh, the first publicity shots, particularly, were the, were the hardest because we were all terrified. I've lost you. Oh, yeah, you got the camera behind you. Oh, you were in front of the camera. No, no, I'm And uh, uh, I remember that we all came out of the, this big cave. I'm sure you all heard about this. This is the first day. There was about, about, I'd say there were about just about half as many people as are here today, press, for our first press day, just to meet the cast. And um, about 30 cameras, television cameras, and about I don't know, 70 other press corps members just crowded around behind this rope um, and they're just like pushing over the way to take photographs. And we were all introduced from behind the thing into, in a big cave, which was part of the set. And we all had to come out and they sort of said, Ready, Aubergine One, Ready, Aubergine One. We had to stand on one dot here and then we had to move to another dot here and go, Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that was about the most freaky experience. Um, so those photos, which some of them are are actually here. So are they setting the, the, the thing here from that first day? It's the ones where all of us are lined up in a cave. <coughs> rock behind. Does anyone remember that photograph? Yeah. And Terry has a bizarre hairstyle, which she never had again. I wonder why. Uh, and Nana has her long hair, of course, and everybody looks a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Except Colin. 
palm look really relaxed in. <laughs> that was the only photo of the palm that they relaxed in, yeah? about how they're working with Bashir in the Deep Space Nine novels, and I haven't read enough of them to, to have any real, really good opinion, because I never get to them. Um, not because they're terrible, I think they're, they're very well written. The ones that I read, one was Blood Letter, Blood Letter, yes. yeah, yeah. and um, I just never got to the end, because of, I just went to work, didn't know, picked up another book, and got, couldn't get to There's a Bashir book coming up in a couple of months, huh? Um, I don't, how are they? What are they doing with the character? Read Fallen Heroes. Is he better on, in the books than he is on the show? <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'll just get the lady behind you and then I'll come to you. How do you like living and working in America compared to Europe? I don't know if I would qualify LA as America. <laughs> I've tried to, and a lot of people get offended uh, that, I don't, that I don't include it, but it is so unlike the rest of America, and I've seen a bit of it now, um, that I can't help but say that. The people are slightly different, that partly because there's such a concentration of uh, incredibly rich people in there. It's a bizarre thing, and incredibly rich people and a huge amount of incredibly poor people. It's just, that's it. That's all there is, like one on top of the other. And uh, it's all plastic, and it all goes, uh, disappears within a couple of days if it's been built. Or someone builds another big donut, or another big hot dog, or something. Uh, you know, and it's very weird. So I, I don't really know much about America, because I've been living in LA for such a long time. Uh, except for the fact that I think that the people I've met, not even the conventions, just generally in, in various cities around the country, have been really generous and nice. And, and I've really appreciated that. Much more generous than the English people would be to you. We're quite tight people, the English. They're very sort of reserved and uh, hello, good morning. <laughs> uh, but you guys are going, come here, you know, whatever, have a pancake. Have <laughs> <laughs> a breakfast. So the breakfast pancake thing is never really understood, but you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but that's basically it. I, I, I like what I see of America. Um, I love New York, went to New York for a bit, love San Francisco, I love uh, even like Milwaukee, you know, like haven't seen much of Baltimore yet, so I can't tell you much about Baltimore. Um, can you tell me much about Baltimore? <laughs> Run back again. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I haven't really made up a huge uh, opinion on that one. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Um, you, finally, I rambled. I rambled, but I got back. I'm back. Oh, yes. You're the first man I've ever met that was like Latin, so I want to know what the opinion of the book. Will do. What was the question? You'll hear it. She's going to say it to you. Oh. I, I, I told him, I've been told I look like Princess Jasmine, but not the French, of course. Um, <laughs> and he's the first man I've met that looks like Aladdin, and I wanted to ask the audience, what do you think? Yeah. The episodes are, are, 
Garrett, a show that ex just a really get to know Garrett can show. Um, for those who like, I think a lot of people seem to like Garrett, and a lot of people have written in. Uh, they're funny, so they're, they're, they're actually didn't, devoting a whole show to him, uh, pretty much, where it's just yeah. Garrett and I wandering around, um, and he, he basically gets, um, he has a huge problem that needs to, it needs to be solved for him, and bizarrely enough, I'm the only person who can solve it, or at least I'm the only person who isn't well enough to solve it with him. Hmm? Sorry. You, you say something, you get caught out. Buy a suit. <laughs> well, I bought so many suits now for him. I think he keeps us the I think he's really just a suit salesman, actually, pretending to be a spy. That's a good way to get me to buy suits. To just go buy me a suit. Buy five o'clock today, come and buy another suit. Yes, sir. I've got some bizarre ideas. Uh, glad you brought that up um, about the space program. First of all, I'm not sure how much I trust your NASA corporation. Um, and I mean that because I believe that there's a lot more that, that's been, um, that is, they've, they've noted and seen out there than they're willing to tell you about. Um, and uh, it seems, I, I've seen videos myself of someone's presentation to the United Nations. Um, and I'm, maybe you might have seen it too, where there was actually a shot of some very bizarre footage, uh, nighttime footage. You saw that um, going coming over the edge of the, the, the planet, and this light flies off into the into nowhere. Um, it's, it's some weird stuff, uh, and it seems that they're not really telling the whole picture, uh, especially with regard to Mars and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not really sure whether I believe it or not, but at least I have I like the opportunity to decide for myself, as opposed to all the photos being kept back. So um, I think they're queering their own copybook, as, 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 a, as, a, as a saying we say in England, I'm sure you do, um, with regard to that. Uh, and if, unless they go one way or the other, they become a total government agency and clam up like the rest of the government agencies, <laughs> or they are a people's agency, um, we just have to spend the people's money, uh, then uh, and tell everybody what's going on. So I, I'm, I'm undecided. Uh, I don't really know. I know that the debate is furious, but I suspect they will get their money. Um, I, I, but I'm not sure. At least Major will tell me so. <laughs> yeah, they'll get their money. She keeps organizing these huge things. I don't know if you, you, she's talked to you about it. She's, or every day, it's her big thing in the space station. And uh, we all went along to her house to meet the astronauts and uh, the head of the um, NASA, this guy who I can't remember his name, but he was... Golden, yeah, he was, the, he was there doing a talk to us. And apparently, the, it was a drive to get all the Star Trek guys to, to say something about the space station. Um, and about, have I still got like, time? Okay, okay, I've got one more minute. Um, and uh, it, we had to do, we had to sort of meet him and shake hands and everything. And he speak, spoke for ages about the brilliance of the NASA space project. Uh, and um, I don't know, I need, to, I need to be convinced here. Uh, so that's why I haven't been telling everybody here to, to vote for, to write to their congressman about the space station. I, mean, I think it's terrific that it's happening, but I don't know if I want it to happen if it's just for the, men, the end of the government, you know, just so they can develop another horrific weapon to blow everybody up with. Yes. Uh, a wrap up comment and then a question. Um, I think you should go to Garak for a dress uniform. Right. First up. And second, um, to wind up, how involved you and your past members in the fan mail? How involved are we in the fan mail? Um, I, don't, I don't speak for everybody except for I will speak for Nana. Um, and for Colin, um, because uh, we we all read fan mail, because we sit and talk about it. We think it's very funny, you know. And this one was great, you read this. And uh, especially with there's lots of poetry and, and art, art, artwork that people send as well, and all sorts of fun stuff. And a lot of that's been kept. I know Rene is keeping all, all his artwork and stuff to actually publish one day. Um, so um, we might all do that. It's, it's, there's some wonderful stuff comes through. Uh, so we do read it. Uh, it just takes eight years to get back to you guys. <laughs> uh, because uh, it takes three months for the mail to deliver us the mail in the first place. I had my birthday just last week. It was actually in November, but I got my birthday cards last week. Uh, and uh, then it takes